And here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Get this out of the way here. Here we go. Whoa. We'll get it yet. There we go. All right. Well, good morning once again, and welcome to the early morning Bible study here at Mid Cape Assembly um, or Mid Cape Worship Center, if you're more up to date. <laughs> we are working our way through 1 Corinthians. We're up to chapter 12. We began this study of chapter 12 yesterday, dealing with the uh, spiritual gifts, and we're going to continue that study today. Uh, Father, in your name, Lord Jesus, we pray for your enlightenment on these, on this, your word, through your spirit, that we may get from it what you would have us have, and that we may live better lives accordingly. In Yeshua's name, we ask this. Okay, um, so just to recap briefly, we've got new material coming up in verse 14, but just to get a really quick back, back uh, overview uh, where we started with this, uh, this is, uh, Paul starts chapter out of uh, dealing with uh, spiritual gifts, um, and um, the gifts are uh, listed here beginning in verse 14 making the point that the spirit, the Holy Spirit is the, uh, the one and the same spirit that issues these gifts to people. And just to uh, condense them very briefly, uh, we're talking about uh, gifts of wisdom here mentioned in verse eight and from uh, verse eight on, the gift of knowledge, okay, and understanding the gift of faith and believing, uh, the gift of healing, uh, gift of miracles, being able to uh, work uh, signs that are beyond the natural, the reflective supernatural, gifts of prophecy, uh, being able to uh, speak uh, what God would see in the future for us. Gifts of discernment, especially of spirit, spiritual discernment is a biggie, being able to know what spirits we're dealing with. Um, we know that uh, Satan <laughs> is a master deceiver and has had centuries of practice at it and is very capable of uh, misdirecting, misleading, uh, downright stopping, uh, or at least uh, seriously inhibiting uh, the work of the Lord. We have to be aware of that, of course. And then finally, uh, the uh, gifts of tongues and the interpretation of tongues, which in this church is a, a prominent um, gift that uh, we want, uh, uh, that uh, we'd like to study. That, that comes up in greater detail in chapter 14. So we're gonna, we're gonna bear down on it there. The thing that, the point that we made yesterday, we'll make it again today, it's considered the last or listed last among the gifts of the spirit, uh, wisdom being top of the list, uh, knowledge and faith, uh, and um, are, uh, of course, uh, they, they're imparted to some degree to everyone who's a believer. I mean, if you believe in Jesus, you're wise. <laughs> if you believe in Jesus, you're knowledgeable. You know what's what's worth knowing. <laughs> and if you have faith in him, you're pleasing him. So these are these are gifts, obviously, that uh, everyone in the body should have. But we should make point, too, that not everyone has all of these gifts. Uh, and uh, some people have none of them and uh, or, uh, no one gift. Uh, in particular, uh, more than another. Um, and uh, that doesn't mean they couldn't be developed. But um, we, uh, we um, tend to uh, 
acknowledge that uh, of the three top that I just mentioned, that, that's common to the body of believers. But something like healing or working miracles, these are obviously more, more uh, specialty uh, items. Um, the gift of prophecy is, uh, again, something that uh, is something that's given. Is, they, they seem to have a special accord and uh, place in the body. And we would look to particular individuals uh, to see their uh, actual exercise. Uh, discernment is a biggie, which is elaborated on that a little bit. Uh, again, being able to distinguish one spirit from another, very big. And then finally, uh, tongues and interpretation of tongues, as we mentioned, will be coming up uh, in 14. So uh, why is uh, Paul, uh, okay, so then the next step, uh, Paul then uh, talks about uni unity, yet diversity in the body. Uh, this is the body of Christ in the body of believers. Those people that believe in Jesus are members of his body. And uh, as such, um, the, the whole concept of being one out of many and uh, many being one, uh, you know, that's kind of built into uh, our national motto, e pluribus unum, uh, from one many. And of course, there we're talking about states in the country and the, the collection of states making up the country and so forth. This is a similar kind of discussion uh, because he's trying to make the point, and he draws, draws on the human body um, as an, uh, to, to analogize this whole topic, uh, saying, in effect, that these different spiritual gifts uh, are found in the body collective. Uh, throughout the entire body of Christ, there are those with these uh, various gifts, and it's the, given, all given by the same spirit to create one body, the body of Christ, uh, but to proportion and to bring forth the gifts as the whole body needs them. Uh, and um, so uh, Paul gets into this, uh, this business here, ver picking up in verse 14, where we left off yesterday. Indeed, the body is not one part, but many. And uh, here goes the analogy to the human body. If the foot should say, if your foot were to say, if your foot could speak, <laughs> because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body. It's not for that reason that, any, that is any less a part of the body. Just because it says it doesn't make it so. <laughs> and if the ear should say, talking ear, right? Here we go. We've got an ear that talks. Because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body. It's not for that reason that it's any less a part of the body. Okay, so again, um, it, 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 these things are just given. You, you think this is just commonsensical. But Paul likes to, I mean, this is the second time in this book where he's really drawn upon comedy of the absurd to make a point in a sense. You know, he's really, he's dealing with, uh, with intelligent people, love debates and discussions and so forth. Uh, they grew up in that culture. And so, but uh, how do you break through? How do you make a fresh uh, argument for something? Uh, one way is to uh, bring forth uh, absurdity in a way that is both entertaining, somewhat amusing, but all in all can be instructive or at least open the door, at least plow the ground for further instruction. And that's that's the I think that's what I see in the in this whole discussion here. Um, picking up in 18, but as it is, God has arranged each one of the parts of the body just as he wanted. So he knows the believers that are in his body, he knows who's there, okay, and they are arranged, okay, um, placed. They have their place, and their place is theirs and nobody else's. Uh, uh, each one parts of the body just as he wanted and if they were all the same part what would the body be uh, have a whole collection of eyeballs and call that the body or the whole collection of ears uh, and call that the body the absurdity is only too obvious right uh, the eye cannot say to the hand i don't need you or again the head cannot say to the feet i don't need you 
On the contrary, those parts of the body that are weaker are indispensable. How's the head going to get around without feet? Right? So just because they're way down low uh, doesn't make them uh, less important. On the contrary. Verse 23, and those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we clothe these with greater honor and our unrespectable parts are treated with greater respect, which our respect respectable parts uh, do not need. Uh, I'm going to let you elaborate on that one, okay? <laughs> I think we know what we're talking about here. Instead, God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the less honorable, so that there would be no division in the body, but that the members would have the same concern for each other. Ah, concern for each other. Isn't that interesting? That, that verb, uh, concern, that, that, uh, that noun, I should say, that, uh, that state of being concerned, different parts concerned with each other, um, because they are, even though they're each individual members, they have a, a unity and therefore a, uh, a universal concern for the whole. So if one member suffers, verse 26, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Okay, that's the body working as a, a, a whole unit and how uh, the different parts uh, contribute to the whole and have a piece of that, uh, the entirety of it. Verse 27, now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it, okay? That's, that's the summary here. You're the body, singular, of Christ, our Lord, and individual members, plural, in it. It's basically all of a sudden, uh, well, he's uh, uh, sort of dramatized through the previous discussion. Uh, verse 28, and God has appointed these in the church. Okay, now, that, now we're talking about people in the church of certain uh, capacities and abilities and anointings uh, to uh, carry out uh, a specific, uh, to focus on particular tasks. This doesn't mean they're exclusively uh, what we're about to mention, but that they are primarily uh, first uh, apostles. Is everybody an apostle? No, but uh, uh, everyone has a, um, uh, well, there are those people that have a, and a special anointing to be such, and, and you really need an anointing to do this job right, because uh, apostles are uh, fundamental in establishing new churches, and obviously it's very important that churches get, uh, get, get the proper start, and uh, so their job is very important. Second, prophets. Okay, prophets, again, uh, people who uh, can, for, uh, can, can convey what God has shown them about how future events are going to turn out. Uh, this is not just making predictions. That's more on the level of being a soothsayer. Someone who doesn't, isn't really uh, seeing the future necessarily, maybe just playing the odds. That's a different, that's, that's a different kind of uh, capacity altogether or lack thereof. Uh, the true prophet uh, is speaking on God's behalf of future events that are going to come to pass and with they are seeing them come to pass. Uh, we can rely more properly on the remainder of the prophet's message. Uh, it, it gains credibility. It gains gravitas. Um, it's um, it's uh, it, it's an essential ingredient. And and prophet uh, being a prophet, of course, is very um, because of its uh, its importance. It's very great of great importance. Uh, there's a very stern. Uh, test for prophets, namely, if they speak a future event uh, and it doesn't come to pass, of course, obviously, you have to speak an event that's going to come uh, uh, about an event that's going to come to pass within their lifetimes. 
uh, and in the immediate future for this to, to apply, but for them to speak an event that comes to pass, they gain credibility as a prophet because many, as we know, many prophecies in the Bible are made centuries in advance of the actual fulfillment. And of course, uh, those won't be seen, but in order to regard those future prophets, uh, prophecies as credible, uh, the prophet has to earn credibility by speaking something uh, currently that comes to pass. And then uh, he gains that, that uh, notoriety, that uh, uh, credibility. Uh, third on the list, we have teachers, people that can uh, teach the word first and foremost, uh, matters about the spirit that uh, are um, uh, important for the entire body to know. Uh, so people that have a special anointing for that are listed third here. Then we have miracle workers, those who can work miracles. And again, uh, miracles, yes, they're wonderful. Uh, we typically find most miracles are blessings and, uh, super, and then they have that supernatural uh, essence to them because if, if they were naturally occurring, we couldn't really categorize them as uh, miracles. But uh, if they come about by uh, a non-natural means, uh, then we were confronted. Are they uh, a, a miracle? Are they, uh, uh, in other words, a good thing, uh, a, a representation of uh, the love of God? Or could they be a deception? Because there are miracles that are coming up that are going to be extremely deceptive in the last days. We are forewarned. Uh, so, but those miracles that have worked in the church as ministers of, of the Lord, of the Holy Spirit, you can bet they are, they are uh, blessings and uh, to be treasured. But miracles, uh, in many instances, are used as attention getters uh, to cause focus upon uh, a particular ministry, a particular teaching, uh, to bring it into focus, uh, to pay attention to a particular event that's going on. Uh, miracles are used to, uh, to garner that attention. Uh, so uh, keep in mind, it's not, not just the miracle, the blessing that occurs from the miracle, for instance, uh, someone that uh, is healed or that is um, uh, healed. Some healings are miraculous. Some are more of a uh, natural type because healings coming up as the next um, uh, appointment. But, um, uh, there, uh, but uh, when, when we see a supernatural event, like uh, the raising of the dead is probably the most uh, conspicuous that we might ever see or even hear of. Um, they, that's certainly a blessing in itself to, uh, to uh, bring someone back who, uh, although if they're on their way to heaven, they may not like it, but, but they're coming back for us, uh, certainly a blessing. Uh, and um, it, it, you know, it, shows, it shows the power of God that he, he can raise the dead. But, uh, but at the same time, uh, it calls attention to uh, this, this capacity of God that uh, may be otherwise overlooked. So, um, gifts of healing. Um, healing can be, of course, as you just mentioned, a type of miracle. And certainly, uh, we, have, we have many stories in this church about people who have been diagnosed with a particular condition go in for treatment of that condition uh, after people prayed for them. Uh, and when, they go, when the doctors look to uh, treat the particular condition, it's not there anymore. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Yes, it is. So uh, this is a, a gift of healing that uh, again, um, is a blessing in itself and calls attention to the power of God and the love of God. And that's a great thing. Uh, next, we have uh, ministries of helping, ministry of helps, people that just are helpful, able to see in a situation 
uh, a particular need that needs to be addressed and just jumping in and doing it. And um, uh, to have that sensitivity, um, the, uh, that gets into uh, discernment somewhat. There's, there are a number of uh, things that are coming together here to be able to offer real help that, that, uh, that is a blessing and doesn't make people feel um, obligated but uh, can appreciate uh, the help uh, to get over a particular uh, situation in, in, in life that's, that's just uh, bogging them down. Uh, this, is a, this is a wonderful gift. Uh, finally, we have various kinds of tongues. We talked about being able to speak in tongues. Uh, in other words, a, a foreign languages, languages that are not common uh, to our natural, uh, to our natural languages, whatever they may be, uh, but not only being able to speak them, but of course there are, are those who can interpret as well. And those are usually, you'll find that those are usually gifts given uh, to different individuals within a body uh, at the same time, because there's not much sense in speaking in a language that can't be interpreted by anyone else. So uh, those often go together. But again, coming up in chapter 14. Um, so now a series of rhetorical questions, are all apostles? No, okay, but do, uh, do people have um, a sensitivity to what apostleship means? Uh, yeah, I mean, we can understand the, the necessity of someone uh, who uh, can go into a situation, go into a new area and begin the planting of a new church, what it must take and how on target with the Lord they must be, how much one-on-one, -on -one, one with uh, the Lord they must be uh, to, to do the job right. Um, so, but are all apostles? No, they, uh, only some people are gifted and anointed uh, to uh, do the actual work. Secondly, are, are all prophets? Same thing, no. Um, but nonetheless, we all have a, um, a sensitivity to uh, how uh, prophecy works and how important it is to uh, building up faith and uh, uh, having, uh, having our bearings directed so that we know where we should be focusing our lives. There it is. Are all teachers? No, but uh, you, they are, we all have something that, you know, virtually everybody has something that they can pass on uh, that, um, can be useful uh, as a uh, subject matter. I mean, look at YouTube, right? <laughs> a lot of it, I'm not saying it's all uniformly good, but you know, there's a lot of good stuff there. But if you have to have discernment to, uh, to ferret it out, but once you do, you can, you can find some excellent work. People that have, have worked all their lives uh, to develop uh, specialties and uh, it's such a blessing to be able to uh, zero in on them uh, with the uh, with all of the uh, tools that YouTube gives us. Uh, that's just one example, of course. Uh, do all do miracles? No, but can all appreciate miracles? Certainly, when they are godly miracles, you bet. Uh, and when they're not godly miracles, uh, we can learn from them too. But we just don't want to get involved with them uh, in the same way, obviously. But do all do miracles? No. Do all have gifts of healing? No. But everybody knows how to open a Band-Aid, right? Uh, we can all do something. Nonetheless, the actual gift of healing uh, to enter into a situation where there's a condition that needs uh, special treatment uh, and to bring the power of God to that healing uh, wonderful thing, not only to, to manifest that healing, but to show again the power and the love of God. And we look forward to him doing this. We have, of course, Pastor Matt is, is dealing with a situation uh, right now that um, we pray for his healing for, and we're confident the Lord will come through uh, with uh, the healing that he needs uh, to get through this situation. We look forward to that. Uh, do all speak in tongues? No. I'll say that here now. <laughs> uh, 
the uh, the insistence on speaking in tongues really shouldn't do that. It, this is a gifting of the spirit, and we should uh, be aware of that. Now, uh, as far as speaking in tongues go, there's uh, there are natural languages uh, that we may take on. Uh, there are supernatural languages, the languages of angels, uh, that uh, that. Uh, we love to uh, tap into as, as we are gifted or to experience as others uh, bring it forth. Uh, and um, this, of course, is, is a wonderful thing. Uh, so uh, tongues and the in interpretation of tongues, again, coming up. Uh, do all interpret? No. That uh, goes with tongues. Do we, is everybody capable of interpreting a foreign language? Of course not. But there are those that are gifted as such. Now he brings all of this up. Now this whole chapter can be seen as a prelude to the next chapter. Chapter 13 is considered to be one of the most important chapters in the Bible. Okay. And he, he, this all is uh, in a crescendo, if you will, and a, um, a, a, um, a prelude, a, a, a prologue to uh, that chapter, which we're in the topic is uh, love. And uh, it concludes this chapter uh, to, uh, as a springboard uh, with verse 31 uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, chapter 13. Desire the greater gifts, okay? Those that are higher, in spiritual prominence, okay? And now I will show you an even better way. That word even there is to say, um, for all the goodness that is uh, imparted to us through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, there is yet a better way. And that's what comes up in, in that's what's coming up in chapter 13, which we, uh, pray, uh, God willing, we'll be able to get into tomorrow. So for now, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your, for your uh, instruction here, your word, your spirit. Help us appropriate uh, these concepts to our, that we might live better lives to glorify you, which is our highest purpose in Yeshua's name. Bye for now.